Welcome back to News Talk, the Monday edition of News Talk here on News Channel 8. I'm Bruce DePoit alongside Tom Threlkeld, Editor-in-Chief of the D.C. Pro Sports Report. Let's go ahead and open up the phone lines as we continue to talk about uh, Super Bowl 50. Uh, we can talk about the broadcast, about the halftime show, about the game, which was uh, pretty interesting. Uh, as, as we said before, not a classic but I'm always happy when it's not a blowout. All right. And uh, what, what is or will soon be the end of an era here in Washington as undoubtedly uh, uh, Robert Griffin III and the team that drafted him at great expense three years ago part ways. Where does Griffin go from here? Can he find success somewhere else? Join us at 703-387-1020. That's our number. We would love to hear from you on this Monday. For those of you watching in the 11 a.m. hour, that's when we can take your calls. Grab an open line now, please, and we'll hear from you at 703 Three eight seven ten twenty in the moments that follow. Uh, we'll talk more about Griffin in a second, uh, but back to the game just for a second. I love politics and I love sports because we're all experts up until the moment something <laughs> happens and then real life kicks in right. and we're it's a it's a wonderfully humbling experience uh, because take the Super Bowl, uh, looking at social media, reading the paper, listening to talk radio. What, what did you think? Was it 80-20? I mean, was oh, yeah, it was over, overwhelmingly Carolina was 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 the the favorite, and yeah. they were they were never in the game. I mean, they, not that they weren't <clears throat> strike that they never they, led. They never led, is what which is remarkable because they led virtually the entire playoffs. Actually, really, almost their entire season. They went 15 and one. They lost late in the season to the Atlanta Falcons, kind of a throwaway game. Then they came in. They they went up on on. Uh, Seattle 31-0 at halftime and let Seattle come back, but really dominated the important parts of that game. Then the next week in the NFC Championship game, they absolutely massacred a fantastic Arizona Cardinals team. I mean, embarrassed them. Really, it was a it was a, a an absolute shambles for for Arizona. And if 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 uh, Carolina wins this game, I think they are absolutely in the conversation for the best Super Bowl teams of all time behind that, of course, undefeated Dolphins team, 15 and one, and they won it all. And yet they lost the game and never led. They never got to play their kind of football, which is, which is to get Cam Newton involved in the running game, get up early, and let their stifling defense come after a quarterback who has to, who has to throw to catch up. Carolina with the ball was always going to be, you know, given uh, where Peyton Manning is right now in terms of arm strength and mobility and all the rest of it. The expectation was, I think the, the excitement go, going into the game was, uh, it's like a heavyweight fight. What happens when Cam Newton and this high-powered offense, this uh, freak of a quarterback, and I say that in the, you know, in the admiring He is. Way, he is I mean, he's an absolute huge, freak. Huge, yeah. great arm, 6'6", six, six, yeah, six, six, 255 fast. pounds I mean, with a great arm. That's right. Really almost unlike anyone we've ever seen before. Right. Going up against one of the probably the most stout defense in the league, yeah. it's a great matchup. It's a, and I think the surprise was that Cam could never break free and and hurt them with a couple long runs which yeah. might have uh i don't know it would have might have affected uh, the extent to which they were dialing up blitzes so often oh yeah, yeah why why couldn't uh uh carolina solve the denver d with some kind of an adjustment if not during the game then at halftime well see that's the interesting thing they took away um greg olson his all pro tight end and his favorite target by far uh denver did uh, a great game by the by the uh, by the Denver safeties. Like I said, T.J. Ward, Darren Stewart were fantastic, and that I think when he doesn't have Olson, uh, Stewart gets a bit antsy. And he, you know, there were a couple of drops. Cotri had a drop. Ted Ginn had a drop. That didn't help either. But one of the interesting things when when they when they actually did have a scoring drive, that was when uh, they had about I don't know 35 yards on that drive rushing from Cam Newton, but it wasn't part of their game plan. You know, he, he gets a lot of yards as part as called running plays, as, as you know, read option plays. And they didn't those didn't work at all. And and they stayed away from him for the most part. Um, the yards he got was scrambling when a pro play broke down and he scrambled. Um, and so we uh, and Jonathan Stewart, uh, the starting running back for um, uh, for Carolina, I think he had 29 yards on 12 carries. They injured his ankle early. He had that great touchdown dive, you know, over the top, but otherwise did nothing. Their fullback, uh, Tolbert, he had two fumbles and did nothing on the ground. They absolutely shut down the key to the Panthers' offense, which is their running game. Mm -hmm. And that allows, look, here's the thing. You, you don't have, if, if your plan against the Denver Broncos' defense is to pass your way to a victory, you don't have a plan that's going to work. As you can say, everyone has a plan until Von Miller hits you in the mouth. <laughs> and and the, they had seven sacks, which ties for the most 
all time in the in, in in Super Bowl history. The team that also had seven sacks, that 1985 Bears defense. That's how good Denver was. They won. The, Denver won the playoffs with their defense. If you watched all these playoff games, you notice Gary Kubiak's plan was to get up early and then do nothing on offense, take no risks, and let the defense and their very great and sometimes overlooked special teams win the game for them. And we're, you know, deep into the conversation here, and we have not talked about Peyton Manning. Let us talk about yes. Peyton Manning a little bit right now. What a remarkable, remarkable. I mean, if this was a movie script that someone came up with, it'd be like, come on, stupid. Mm. The idea that Peyton Manning would... Uh, be benched in the middle of the season, come back in week 16, and lead his team to the to the super to a Super Bowl Super Bowl victory is really a remarkable thing. Yeah. And 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 to do it in a way that that is so far removed from any of the great quarterback right. performances we've seen in in the playoffs generally or the Super Bowl in particular. I mean, the strategy seemed to be don't fumble, don't throw yeah. a pick, don't screw up, let the defense win it for us. It's I mean, yeah, this is not like a Peyton Manning game we've ever been used to. A couple of years ago when they went to the Super Bowl and, and lost not, badly. And, and it's not Brady and it's not Montana. And yeah, that's right. This is, not what, this is not what we expect, especially in a quarterback league. Um, I was looking at some of the stats. His stats are almost exactly the same as the stats John Elway had when he finally won a Super Bowl. In that game where Elway finally won, but he was really just mainly the guy who handed the ball off to Terrell Davis in that game. In this game... Um, you saw a Manning being quite honest. You know, I'm, a, I'm not the leader of this gang anymore. I'm, I'm a supporting player, and that's, and that's really what it was. His job was to make fewer mistakes than Cam Newton, and he did that. You know, the, the four turnovers for Carolina, three by Newton. Now, you know, he, uh, Manning was hardly perfect, two, two turnovers. And they had, I think, 194 yards of offense, 50 yards less than the previous record holder that, for a team that had won the Super Bowl. Um, and so now the question for, for Manning is, everyone wants to know, and everyone's been asking him since then, yeah. is will he retire? Surely he should. I mean, he's had enormous physical challenges mm -hmm. in a part of the body that it would be nice to have as a, you know, if he's got 40 years left, wouldn't it be nice to have a neck? Yeah. You know, I mean, and to, to, to have ch uh, achieved the highest level of success in your sport twice, most recently five minutes ago right. isn't this the obvious moment this is the absolutely obvious moment and he he says he hasn't made up a, he made up his mind yet I think if he wants to really make up his mind he should look at the game tape um, and he is just not a good quarterback anymore and it pains me to say that as a huge Peyton Manning fan as someone who's really gotten great enjoyment watching him uh, since he entered the league he is just not the guy you want at quarterback they won this Super Bowl basically in spite of him and, uh, you know, I think that's not – I don't think there is a place for him in the league anymore. I think he's done it. He won his second Super Bowl, and he deserves it. And for anyone who says, you know, oh, second Super Bowl, he was just along for the ride on this, I would point out that Peyton Manning took a lot of teams along for the ride with him. Over the course of his career, he dragged a lot of teams that were no good <laughs> into the playoffs. And we, let's just remember – that when his, when, you know, when he got injured and missed the 2012 uh, season, uh, 2011 season, uh, the the, the oh. Colts went from one of the best teams in the league to the absolute worst team. It was in the like league. a light switch. That's right. And so, you know, Peyton Manning was the Colts, and and I think that he should, he still needs to be regarded as one of the top three quarterbacks of all time. And he got his second Super Bowl. He deserves it, and this is absolutely the right time to go out because he is not a starting caliber quarterback in the NFL. Let's anymore. pivot. Let's pivot back to our other top story mm. and talk about whether Robert. Griffin the third can be a starting quarterback in the NFL and I say that maybe maybe it's naive of me to say that but when I think about him as a pocket passer over the last however long you know the, the last 2013 batch 2014 of, yeah, yeah. batch of games uh, and now he's he's been sitting for a year I'm not convinced so so as a running quarterback we've seen him have success but we don't think that there's necessarily a willingness to take the sort of abuse that inevitably that uh, format of offense. He can't take that abuse. He, 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 he's physically we, not built. Yeah, what we've learned, yes. But one thing is he's not Cam Newton. Cam Newton is a tank. And, and Griffin, if you look, look at him, is built like a sprinter. Very, very different. He's not built to take those, those kind of hits. The other thing is he's very bad at, at protecting himself. He are, doesn't get down. He doesn't avoid hits. Can Robert... Griffin III master the, the fundamentals of pocket passing that, that 
me as an amateur thinks have eluded him so far? We don't know. I think one thing I, I will say for certain is that it will take time. I don't see him coming into, you know, coming into some team next year and running a traditional pocket passing offense, whether it's West Coast or any other kind, uh, and flourishing. Now, could he get a starting job? Absolutely. When you look at some of the people who started NFL games this year, you know, he could get a starting job. Um, one place he might show up and think, well, I could sit for a couple of years and then get a starting job would be Dallas. Um, as, as bad as that would rub a lot of uh, Skins fans, um, you know, Tony Romo is injury prone and, and, you know, he's up there, 36 years old, I believe, and, and running out the clock. Um, and they want to get a Super Bowl quickly for him. And it was thought by many people, they don't have a backup quarterback. That's what hurt them this year. Uh, many people thought they had that, a revolving door. That's right. right. Many people thought that Johnny Manziel was going to go to Dallas because um, Jerry Jones wanted to draft him a couple of years ago. But Manziel is flamed out, and we don't know if he has any kind of NFL career left at all. Right. And I think that has improved the chances of RG3 going to Dallas. But he's going to have to sit because they, they play a totally different offense there for him. He would have to learn a new offense. And that's what I think he needs to do, sit and learn how to play. Given how humiliating the last 18 months, two years, has been for Robert Griffin III, what's the, briefly, what's the emotional uh, component or need for him to go somewhere else get a clean slate, and prove to everyone back here that uh, there's a lot of gas in the tank. Yeah, I think that's, that's a major issue, whether or not he's going to be ruled by his emotions in this. He left that, you know, that little note up on his, on, on his uh, locker, which rubbed a lot of coaches around the league the wrong way, who thought that basically he was saying, this, this pro all these problems aren't on me, it's on, it's on somebody else. He, he is someone, he needs to understand that he's made mistakes, that he has, he's got injury issues, and that he has to learn how to play quarterback in the NFL. He doesn't know. He doesn't know how to play professional quarterback. And I say that as someone who really enjoyed watching RG3. I am not a Griffin basher, as anyone who reads DC Pro Sports Report knows. But he does not know how to play quarterback at a professional level. And he's going to have to learn that. Because if he gets a starting job or any kind of job next year, he won't last long unless he, unless he learns how to A, protect himself, and B, play quarterback like a normal quarterback in the NFL. When we come back, we'll talk about the concussion concerns and the CTE concerns that have lingered over uh, football and were very much part of the conversation leading up to Super Bowl 50. We'll continue with Tom right after this.